ShireSociety.com. Post from John Dave 09, date Wednesday, August 1st, 2001. Subject, New Hampshire Census Statistics. Quote, New Hampshire is the best option I have read so far, well below the national median in terms of poverty percentages and above the national median in home ownership. Unquote. Post from Jason Sorens, August 1st. Subject, loyalty oath? Quote, I've gotten an email from two people who are concerned that the language of the pledge was too strong, that it sounds like some kind of loyalty oath, unquote. Post from Roman 18, date, Wednesday, August 1st, subject, loyalty oath? I would, pro- quote, I would propose a, propose a scaled system. The outermost ring would be those interested in the project but not willing to physically move. The final, most important group are those willing to be binded by the pledge as it stands. Unquote. So here we add, before the end of day one, a sense that there would be roughly ten states to pick from, that the race was probably New Hampshire's to lose, and that getting the message out would be critical, and that there should be some way of involving people who couldn't relocate. The topics of debate, which were to transfix us for the next two years, also showed themselves immediately. Should we seek news coverage? If so, how? Which state should we pick? And on what basis? By day five, the Endeavor had a website, freestateproject.cjb.net. By day eight, it had unofficially recruited 250 interested parties and generated its first spreadsheet for comparing candidate states. By day nine, it had a motto, which was never to change, liberty in our lifetime. As August drew to a close and day 30 approached, the Free Staters' month-old Yahoo group had posted 1,100 messages. Young Jason Soren's Free State Society was exploding in size and enthusiasm. It was also doomed to suffer an early, massive setback. Chapter 3. Hammer Many Americans are not precisely sure what they were doing as the first frantic phone calls, reportedly, began emanating from United Airlines Flight 175. But nearly all can tell you where they were when they heard the news. For me, it was an accelerated drive through downtown Dallas. After I heard live reports that a second commuter jet had struck the World Trade Center. I remember, and who could forget, grinding to a halt in traffic not two blocks from the tallest building in town, watching with no small interest a low-flying vessel positioned to my north. It was headed south. I remember glancing around, carefully imprinting into memory a final image of urban America going about its business, unaware, in apparent peace and relative freedom. A hairy middle-aged woman scurrying to work in her dress and running sneakers. A squadron of homeless scattered around the Griffin and Main bus stop, preparing to live, perhaps, another hot Texas morning. Spared though we were, the drive and the world would look very different a day later. Whatever the exact sequence and nature of events on September 11th, There is no doubt that it distracted virtually all Americans from their prospects and dreams. Sorens and members of his infant movement were not exceptions, and interest in the free state concept almost immediately fell off. Faith in the clumsy Washington apparatus waxed and compounded, even as its inability to protect was laying bare. Certainly the ravages of Islamo-fascism bore some resemblance to the Nazi and Soviet tyrannies Americans had beaten in the past. And many libertarians, including these freshly minted freestaters, were interested in seeing its perpetrators defeated or held at bay. Some apprehended, in the prophet's most extreme followers, a threat potentially graver than the federal menace. 
But these riveting events struck the nation after its radioactive stockpile of government expansion had already been growing for over 200 years. There was little, little room for it to balloon further without great peril, both to the nation's treasury and the individual's liberty. Yet balloon it would, with scant opposition and disastrous results. The Free State Society was now, in short, half as potent, but twice as needed. Soren's original Free State Project essay in 2001 had included a prophetic, perhaps understated, warning. Quote, One doesn't have to see black helicopters everywhere to note that ad hoc world governance structures are already in place. If we do not carve out a sphere for freedom now, freedom will be lost for a long time to come. Unquote. Viewed in the context of events that follows, one wonders if Soren's plan may have in fact come at the last possible moment. Certainly we would be further along if it had po possessed just a few more months of breathing room before the terrorist hammer fell, before the government's failure in meddling gained it such loyalty. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. It didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at ShireSociety.com.